Well, good morning. Today is Tuesday, March 13th, and I wanted to go for a walk this morning, but we had freezing rain last night and um, snow this morning, but the sun is out. So I'm hoping that within the next couple hours that it'll be melted enough that I can walk. Uh, I've been kind of judging by, I have a, um, a slope in my sidewalk in front of my house and it um, causes ice to build up there, puddles and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that once that puddles like water, I'll know that it's safe for me to go out and walk because I am determined to walk every day this week. Uh, I don't do exercise videos. I tried the Leslie Sansu. It's it's like an exercise video. I'm just, that's just not me. I like to walk outside and the cold doesn't bother me and that's my plan. So anyway, I woke up this morning and started to read. And so I read this article by Aaron Broadwin called The Best Ways to Lose Weight and Keep It Off According to Science. Uh, so I thought I would share it with you. And um, it's just basic stuff that we know. And they talk about our country because in a country that eats breakfast, eats dessert for breakfast, sustained weight loss can feel like an uphill battle. Uh, how many people go get that coffee and a muffin or uh, a Danish or a donut? Those are desserts. Those are breakfast foods. Um, not to say that I haven't had my share of them because I have. I know that. But, you know, you just have to realize when you're eating something, is this the appropriate time to be eating it? Uh, not that there's um, different times of the day that it sticks to you. It's just, you know, I think that it sets your day off how you're going to eat that day. <clears throat> I find myself if I eat something really heavy and sugary, like if, like the pancakes yesterday really didn't bother me because it was just one pancake. Usually I have like four of that size too, but I, I cut down. I'm done, doing well. And I usually use um, regular maple syrup and that was sugar-free syrup. So I didn't uh, eat as much. And uh, But I do find that if I eat something sugary at the start of the day, it kind of kicks those cravings in and then I want to eat it all day long. But if you're aiming to make big changes to your diet and your health, it's, it's not uh, helpful to try to do it on your own. You should need to go to a doctor to, to find out what's healthy for you. Um, I find that joining Weight Watchers has really tremendously helped me. Just the support I get. Uh, the YouTube, I think, the YouTube community has uh, definitely, without a doubt, I would say... Um, I would say at least 95% of it is the YouTube community has helped me stay on track. The other 5% was Weight Watchers, but not to, not to downplay Weight Watchers because um, I do love the program. But <clears throat> I think that if I have to uh, just be accountable to one person once a week at Weight Watchers, I'm not going to do as well as I am being accountable to all of you guys out there every day showing you my food because I do rethink what I'm going to eat sometimes like oh I got to show that and I know that I really don't have to show you you wouldn't know if I was to eat it how would you know you don't live with me but when I got on the scale at the end of the week you'd know so <clears throat> sorry in the morning my throat is always kind of raspy I'm not sick it's just my sinuses and things but anyway they're going to give you some uh, they gave us some suggestions, and you know what? They're really all no-brainers, but it's just a reminder, quick reminder. Uh, the first thing is start eating more vegetables, especially the greens. Um, dozens of scientific studies have tied diets high in vegetables, especially greens, to better outcomes, including weight loss and a decreased risk of chronic diseases. Um, you know that they say that these are the powerhouse ones, are watercress, which I've never had, spinach, which I love, chives, all right, collard greens, which I've never had. Um, they're on the, the powerhouse food list. And if you start adding them to your plate, you, you'd notice a difference. <coughs> Sorry, but um, it doesn't mean that you have to slash all your meat, uh, your dairy, your, you know, like, or your fish. It's, fish is mostly proteins, depending on what fish is, which fish you eat. And it can give you, give you a high sense uh, source of protein, which the more protein you have, the less likely you are to eat. Um, heavier fattening things. Uh, another no-brainer. Replace soda or sweet tea with sugar-free drinks. <clears throat> I like, I'm very fortunate because I don't use table sugar. I, not to say that I don't have sugar in my life, because I do have sugar in my life, but I'm not, I'm not a table sugar eater. Uh, my kids grew up never having a sugary cereal, um, never putting sugar on their cereal, until they left the house and now they all use sugar on their cereal and their kids use sugar on their cereal. I just, um, I just never, the only thing I put sugar on cereal in was my oatmeal and my uh, cream of wheat and then I used brown sugar and I used a lot of brown sugar. I mean my food would look brown, I had so much brown sugar on it. 
But um, if we run out of sugar, you know, Jim will say, we have no sugar. You know, I thought, well, you got to tell me that because I don't use sugar. Yeah, but in the, my pop, oh, I love my sugar in my pop. I'm very, you know, like I don't like it in my tea and I don't like it in my iced tea. I just like a plain black tea. That's, that's all. And so that kind of helps me. Um, I drink a lot of water now. I drink water at my meals. Um, I always used to drink like two cans of pop, but now I drink like a 12 ounce glass or 16 ounce glass of tea and a 16 ounce glass of water. Kind of compensate for the two 12 ounce cans of pop I used to drink. Uh, if I went to Burger King or McDonald's, I always got the 32 ounce drink. So, well, what was the, you know, I was drinking a lot of sugar is the point I'm trying to make. But, <clears throat> but you know, if you curb your intake of it, you're gonna see a difference in uh, just how you feel and you know like you're not and there's so much caffeine in a lot of the sugary drinks too and that kind of keeps you awake at night too uh, another thing they tell you is to swap white bread and rice in your meal for whole grains one of the least healthy components of most America diet appears to be refined carbohydrates which includes white bread and white rice um, and you want to look at the nutritional labels because sometimes you don't want refined flour. You want, <clears throat> sorry, they can be found in processed foods and they appear as refined flour or just simply flour. I like a full grain, um, like a 13 grain slice of bread. I do have some in the freezer, but uh, I started eating the uh, Aunt Millie's because it was two points for two slices. But um, I think I'm going to go back to the whole grain because I, I really do like the whole grains. They digest a lot slower and they, they stay with you for hours. The wheat bread that I eat from um, Aunt Millie's, I do like it. I'm not putting it down or anything. But uh, it just doesn't stay with me as much as the 13 grain slice of toast does. Um, but the key difference between whole grains is that they still have their nutritious, fiber-rich outer cells, such as the germ and the bran. It's good to know. Third thing they tell you to do, or maybe it's the fourth. I lost track. But anyway, it's cut back on carbs whenever you can. It doesn't mean you can't eat carbs. It's just that you gotta slow down and eat with them and just cut back on a little bit. Um, they, uh, eating, even if you're eating whole grains instead of refined ones, you should keep in mind that researchers believe that all end up getting processed the same way. That means cutting back on any kind of carb carbohydrate is likely a smart move. Try swapping flour-based noodles with spiralized carrot or zucchini noodles, for example. <clears throat> I've never made it, but I've had it. Is the spaghetti swap, spaghetti scop, the, let's start again. I've had it, but I've never made it, the spaghetti squash. Uh, and I really like it. You know, put some tomato sauce or, you know, pe you know sauce on it, and it, it's really good. But I, I don't know, for some reason I've never made it. I don't know why. I, I another thing I don't know. But um, if you control your glycemic intake, it's uh, going to maintain your health and it's going to help you prevent disease. And it also helps um, you control your blood sugar and your, um, your obesity, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease, which that only makes sense. Now I have to get the phone. One moment, please. Well, Jim's glasses are in, so we have to go get them today. Uh, and also they tell you to aim to lose only a pound or two a week. I know that all of us want to lose all that weight right away. I can gain three, four pounds in a weekend and then spend the whole week trying to lose it. Um, <clears throat> but you have, to, you have to know that it's healthier. And the slower you go, the more you learn about yourself. The more you can learn, I can eat this, I can eat that. I better eat this, I better not eat that. Uh, it just, it only makes sense. And if you, slow, if you do it slowly, it gives you time to create the healthy new habits of eating right and your exercise patterns. And then you can maintain that longer. Um, anybody can go on like a starvation diet where you're not going to eat anything for two weeks and you lose that 10 pounds. And we all know as soon as you go back to eating, you gain it back. That's like if you're really sick and with the flu or something and you get on the scale and you lost five pounds, you really didn't lose five pounds. You just lost a lot of fluids. And as soon as you start eating again, it's all gonna come back. So it's, it's a fake loss. If you lose one to two pounds a week, <clears throat> eating the right way, exercising, doing everything you're supposed to do, then you know that's a true weight loss. You know that's gonna stay off because you've learned how to lose the one or two pounds and so you, you're still eating healthy and it'll follow through with other ones. And 
you've got to give yourself two, three, f even four years of cons consistent behavioral changes. And that's hard work. You're building new habits and it takes time. I know they say it takes two to three weeks to form a new habit, but, and in a sense I do believe that, but in the same sense I think that, I, I agree with them it's gonna take a couple years because um, I've been on Weight Watchers now for 14 months and I do see that um, I'm getting a little bit better. I, I still have a long way to come, I know that, but um, it's, a slow, it's a slow process. I'm 67 years old. I've been doing what I want to do for 67 years, and to think that I'm going to change it like overnight, it's not realistic. I have to know that it's going to take time. But you know what? I'm worth the time. I'm worth the effort. I really am. And just think, you know, like my biggest regret in life is that I've waited so long to lose this weight. If any of you out there are young, you know, like tomorrow is going to be here before you know it. Um, I can look at my children, because Christy's birthday was just, she just turned 37. I was just 37. It was just the other day I was 37. It goes by that quickly. And I'm enjoying my life so much more now. Not to say that I didn't enjoy my life before, because I, I really lived, I have lived a very good life. And I've had, I've, there's not, you know, not too many things in life I would trade off on. Uh, anybody could say that they would go back, you know, and do it again. But, you know, like the song, Frank Sinatra's Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. And I, I agree that with that. I've, I've had regrets in my life, but I've had more joy in my life than regrets. And, and it's, a, it's a learning process, and I'm learning more and more about myself every day. And I'm sure you guys are learning more and more about yourselves, too, as you, as you learn this. And I, can, I can't stress enough that... Um, the younger you are, the, the sooner you should be doing this. I, you know, and don't belittle people that say, oh, you know, I got to go on a diet, I got to lose 10 or 15 pounds. Just think if I would have done that when I only had to lose 10 or 15 pounds, I wouldn't be on this journey right now. Of course, then I would have never met you guys. So, I mean, you know, you always got to take the good with the bad. And uh, it's just, I don't know, now I'm just like preaching or something. I don't know. It's just, I just think that, you know, your life is too short, and, and I don't like hearing when older people say, well, you know, I'm old, and I can't lose the weight. No, I'm old, I can lose the weight, but it's going to be slow. Uh, when I was younger, I could lose five or six pounds in a week and keep it off, but then I would go back to my old way of eating after a couple months and uh, get the weight back on, and obviously I did something wrong all these years as far as weight because look how big I got. But anyway, enough of the preaching from Sandy. So I hope that uh, this video helped you, and I will see you on my daily vlog.